After almost two years of sitting on the sidelines of the flat earth resurgence, I've decided to throw my hat into the ring of this highly heated debate. There are many, many other channels on the topic of flat earth, and I know that my piddly little channel that I'm trying to create today was not even to put a dent in the armor of either side. But over the past year of my own personal watching of this debate and me trying to understand both sides, I can't just stay quiet anymore. I've got to speak up. Firstly, I believe in the globe. Not because my teachers or because history told me so, but because everything that I understand about the world tells me it's true. Now, while other sites are going to go deep in depth on the science, and there's going to be others that are nothing but anti-flat earth porn ridiculing the believers, that's not what I want this channel to be. This will be my own personal investigations and inquiries into things that I understand about debate that are outside what other people are thinking. Things that others may not have considered as proof for or against the globe but things that I've seen as indications of what the shape of the Earth really is. So today let's start with earthquakes. Now many may be wondering why earthquakes, how they would support the view of a globe or a flat Earth. And I hope that I will be able to at least open this door to the conversation on the topic. I'll be honest, I'm not a geologist. I have no deep, in-depth knowledge of earthquakes or anything about plate tectonics. But I thought this would be a good way to evaluate a globe versus plane model from a common person's point of view. So, here we go. On 27 September of 2010, an 8.8 .8 magnitude earthquake struck off the coast of Chile. Again, I'm not a seismologist, I'm not an earthquake ex expert, but this sounds pretty big to me. Now, you may be asking how I came up with this specific earthquake. I literally googled large earthquake South America. Now this will be important later, but that's how I found this particular quake to do some research on. And I'd like to take you on the path of my investigation into this quake. And ultimately where it started was Reddit. I posted a question on Reddit asking how to find seismic data because I didn't know where to go. I had the thought, but I didn't know where to find the information. I'd searched on my own, but every site I found was just pure numbers, pure data, things that meant nothing to me and I could not understand it. So Reddit in pure Reddit style responded and gave me a website, www.ds.iris.edu.wilbur3. Intrigued by this little website, I started to click away. So let's take a look. So here is the Iris website that I was directed to from Reddit. I'd never heard of this one before, and I'm glad I found it because it actually has a lot of data that you can you can understand. Uh, the other places that I'd found was numbers, gibberish, gobbledygook that I just didn't understand. So right now what this is showing is the past 30 days of all seismic activity across the planet. Um, you can see where you'd expect it on the, the western coast of the United States, up in Alaska, a little bit across Japan, basically the ring of fire, as, as we've all heard. So I want to find that specific earthquake that I had discussed earlier. So we're going to go here. You're quick, uh, searching by date, 2010, and it automatically goes to magnitude 4 plus. It'll show everything over magnitude 4 plus. So this is the entire year of 2010. Um, you can refine it a lot more. You can change the, the depth of the quake. You can change the magnitude. You can look for a specific date. And for a long time while I was searching for this specific quake, every time I came back to this page, I would change it to February 27th, begin date, end date, and I would find it with the other smaller quakes that, are, that happened that day. But then I came to realize that you can sort down here, and if you just sort by magnitude, that was the largest quake of the year. Near the coast of central Chile, magnitude 8.8. .8. And here's the longitude, here's the latitude, and it happened at 28 kilometer depth. So when you click on here, it brings you to the event of that specific quake. Everything on that day. These are all of the stations that registered some type of a wave from that quake. Now, if you go to here, to the uh, IRIS event page, it's got more data. It's got the original quake waves. It's got 
other options down here and this is where I found a lot of the information I'm going to provide you I'm not going to go to each specific link right now but it, this is where I found it now here's a map of the American seismic stations as you can see there's a large number of them concentrated in the middle I'm not sure the reason for the trail up to the tornado belt so if any uh, anyone out there actually knows the reason for that please let me know now here I've overlaid it over a map off of Chile you can see the epicenter right off the coast. The bottom left is another cut off of that American map that documents the average of the wave as it passed by America and the time that it passed. You'll see that each station has its own reading. As the wave passes, you'll get that uh, the, the reading from each station individually. The bottom right is an animation by Princeton of the wave coming from Chile. I personally wouldn't put as much stock into its exactness but it's a really good representation of the event itself. The American map is an individual station, one by one, you know, a place that you can walk up to and look at and the data that came from it. It's a box on the ground. At least that's what I picture. You know, it's measuring the seismic activity. You know, heck, the girl from Tremors used them, so it's gotta be real. Now, watch as the quake happens. It travels across the plane, let's call it. Now it's pretty impressive, now just watch as it moves up and ripples like the waves on a lake, on a, what would you say, a flat lake. Just watch as the ripples go across the Americas. Each individual station records this. Uh, this isn't fake data, this isn't something that ever, somebody made up. These are individual places across the United States that recorded the wave. Now here is a map of every reporting station and their distance from the epicenter. Again, you can see that big batch in the Americas. The distance is described by degrees of latitude from the center, so that you can understand on a globe how far they were from the event. You can see on the western coast of Africa about 80 degrees, and the eastern coast of Australia is about 100 degrees. Now, way up in the north, you can see Greenland and the, the northern part of Canada it's about 120 degrees from the actual event center. Now way off to the sides, and it's kind of hard to picture in your head, but on a globe, this is the direct opposite of the planet. On this image here, you can visualize it. It's still not that great because all of the other pixels on there, the other stations. The left is the epicenter, and the right is the, what would you call it, the, the oppo center? Now here you can see the pattern of the individual stations as the waves were tracked passing their location. I love this graph, it's amazing. Now the time is on the bottom and the distance is, uh, in degrees is on the left. But what it shows you is the wave should have gone from the epicenter across the planet to the, as I called it, the opocenter between 19 and 25 to 30 minutes and you can see on the the graph here there's different types of wave I discussed that before and there's more descriptions down below but you can see the waves arrived between those times now let's go back to that original map and see how that looks these are all the readings from those stations based upon when the wave went by them so if we click on something that's pretty close to the event in Argentina you can see two minutes and a pretty big wave passing by. And the P waves are the internal to the, the planet waves. The S waves are the surface waves. So from there, let's go out 30 degrees to Rapa Nui to Easter Island. Six and a half minutes, 11 minutes. You can see the time from the event until the the, the wave passes by and you can see they kind of match the general shape of the waves if we keep going out farther let's go over here this isn't quite Australia this is Tasmania the Tasmania pass 13 minutes for the body wave 24 minutes for the surface wave so we're still on that timeline from that original graph and you can see these waves as they pass by and down here we've got the the UTC timeline so let's go up north, way up north. Greenland to Stumfjord, Greenland. Probably the only town that an American can actually pronounce. 
14 minutes for the, the body waves and 25 minutes for the S waves. So let's go back and take a look at that original image of the distances. And here is where we find our flat earth problem. You can see from this image how the, the timing matches that uh, the, the Northern Americas are approximately 100 degrees from the epicenter and that the eastern coast of Australia is about 100 degrees from the epicenter. And their times about match for when the wave hits them. But on a flat earth map, that's not where Australia is. Australia is much, much farther than the Americas and would have a much, much farther distance to travel. That would be twice the distance from the northern side of North America for that wave to hit Australia. And that's not what we see. That's not what those individual stations see. What we see is this. And we see that wave propagate out from the epicenter, pass by everything that is equidistant from it by latitude, and then once it passes that 180 degree point and starts going around the planet, it continues in a concentric circle all the way to the other side. And if you look at this graph the way I did when I first saw it, you see that body wave, the slower internal wave, propagating out from the epicenter all the way out to 180 degrees. And you can see it takes longer for the body waves to get out there. But what I didn't even notice when I first saw this graph is what happens after that. Do you see it? It comes back. And at the epicenter, at just under 200 minutes, the same wave that went out from the earthquake travels around the planet to the 180 degree point and comes back just like this.